Well, this is a big deal. This is the first time in history that an American president will face criminal charges. Of course, I'm talking about the indictment of former President Donald Trump. So this is just happening now as I'm making this video. I want to start off by reading a little bit from Paul's epistle to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, the very famous 13th chapter about love or charity. I'm reading here from the English Standard Version. It says, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. So, of course, that's what Christians are all waiting for. Whatever it is that we think about this or that, we know that things are imperfect and we are waiting for a, a more perfect reality, a, a more perfect solution. And as we wait, the best that we can do, the best that anyone can do is act according to love, to restrain ourselves and make ourselves behave in a manner compatible to the will of God and compatible to the needs of others, regardless of the situation. Now, of course, an event like this is causing a lot of reaction, a, a lot of very emotional reaction. There are people who are going to be very, very upset over Donald Trump facing these charges. So they've been prepared to be upset for uh, weeks in advance. I made a video about it a while ago when Trump was talking about it, calling on people to react of course, for a lot of people, uh, they feel that, that this has been a long time coming and that this is well-deserved and that this is something that is a very just thing and, and is good for the country. I lean towards that point of view in as much as it's important to have uh, the, the law being applied equally to people regardless of their power, regardless of their status, regardless of their fame or the public support that they have. Again, this is the first time that a U.S. president has faced this kind of situation. I think we all know, and, and many respectable historians would agree, that there have been a number of presidents through the history of the United States for whom it would have been appropriate to face charges, who were very likely guilty of some kind of criminal activity and probably should have faced charges but didn't because of the nature of the system in regards to someone as powerful, important, and famous as a president or former president. Now, unfortunately, I, I think that any ultimate benefit from this is going to be very limited. You know, the, the kind of things that Donald Trump will face charges for will probably be some of the least serious things that he did as president. He's not going to face charges for his presiding over the drone war in the Arabian Peninsula or the drone war in Afghanistan or putting sanctions on Syria or Iran and the many, many lives that he has inconvenienced, disrupted, destroyed, even killed through his executive actions when he was the president. If he was to face charges for those more serious things, you would have to show equal justice then to other former presidents, to Barack Obama, to George W. Bush. And as far as we know, nothing like that is in the works and or probably ever will be in the works. So while, yes, it, it may be a positive thing that someone like Trump, who is clearly guilty of many kinds of small and large crimes, that he is going to have to face some kind of legal repercussions for some of those crimes, you know, this is not going to be some great victory for justice, I, I think, at least not in the case of Donald Trump. Trump. He's going to be okay. I think, you know, regardless of, of what happens, you know, he, he's not going to face very much in the way of inconvenience or, or punishment for his crimes. You know, for, for the average little person, you know, facing the law, when the law catches up to you for one's wrongdoings, it's a much more serious thing and, and can cause serious inconvenience and even ruin for a person or their family. Now, Again, you know, for, for people who are outraged over 
what is happening to Donald Trump. I, I hope they show the same amount of outrage and disappointment over the hurt lives and reputations and the, the ruined families of the average person who faces the law. Whether they deserve it or not, the legal system is a very tough thing to face. So who knows, but maybe this will help conservatives to be a little softer, a little more understanding, a little gentler on those who are facing the law. You know, if they see uh, this hero of theirs facing the law and, and they feel a desire to, to protect this person, a, a desire for this person not to have to face legal repercussions for his actions, hopefully they will also feel the way towards other people who have to face the legal system for their actions. Perhaps this will result in a, a gentler attitude towards those who break the law. Certainly there are consequences for breaking the law, and, and in society as it is, those consequences seem to be necessary. We can always be gentler and more understanding to the people who are on the wrong side of things and facing life-altering repercussions for their actions. But whatever the case, you know, we need to stay gentle and humble ourselves, looking out towards the, the needs of others. How can we do good for others? How can we keep our, our own ambitions, our own weaknesses in check and subservient to the, the greater good? Well, I think the news is going to be coming out fast. The story will change quickly over the coming days as things unfold. We find out the, the full seriousness of what these charges are and what kind of scenario Trump may be facing. And, and whatever happens, you know, hopefully this will help us all to be a little more, more mindful of those facing the legal system, facing justice for their actions, because ultimately justice is about making things right. And successful justice is to rehabilitate the situation and all of those involved. It goes hand in hand with mercy, goes hand in hand with restitution, goes hand in hand with restoring what's good. So a fascinating story, possibly some lessons to be learned from watching this all unfold and, and seeing how it affects people. Thanks for watching. Please leave some comments below and I will talk to you again soon. Bye for now.